2015, Massachusetts welcomed a new governor and a renewed vision to stabilize the economy and spur economic growth in the Commonwealth. I'm Jenny Johnson for Comcast Newsmakers at Suffolk University's downtown Boston studio. The Massachusetts Executive Office for Administration and Finance Chief of Staff Dominic Ayano joins me. Dom, thank you for being here. Morning. So the Baker administration inherited a $768 million deficit for the fiscal year of 2015. So what did the Office of Administration and Finance do to address this shortfall? So when we came into office, we had to do an assessment. Uh, the Administration of Finance is the agency that manages the, the state's finances and budget. So we came in immediately, sat down with uh, CFOs of agencies and got a chance to really see how much of a problem we were in. We realized that revenue was coming in, but we had a big spending problem. Mm -hmm. Spending this year was going to go up almost 8% over last year, which is really a big number. And you really have to keep that under control. So we did a couple of immediate things. We, we put in a hiring freeze. We did a regulatory pause uh, to make sure that we weren't making the problem worse. Mm -hmm. And then we quickly uh, moved the program through to try to address that. Some of it was spending cuts or, or reductions. Uh, but really it was a lot of reductions to items that weren't yet even started, programs that hadn't started um, or, or newer programs. That, uh, so we, we got through those uh, and then we, we were moved on to uh, figuring out what we were going to do for the next budget year because we had to file a budget a few weeks after that. Oh, so let's talk about the 2016 budget proposal. Can you tell us about some key points? Sure. So when you come in, you have to also file your budget for next year. The Commonwealth's fiscal year ends June 30th, so you come in in the middle of a year. Mm -hmm. So you have to immediately look towards next year. So we were able to file a budget that significantly reduced spending. The spending plan we put forward for next year reduces spending to 3% growth, down from 8% growth, which is a significant drop. Mm -hmm. um, we were still able not to make cuts. In fact, we made a lot of increases in areas like education, local aid, transportation, including funding for the T. So we are able to, to fund some priorities this year, even though we identified for fiscal year 2016 a gap of almost $2 billion. So we had to figure that out. We didn't raise taxes, we didn't raise fees, we didn't use the stabilization fund, and we were still able to protect a lot of the core programs for our, for our vulnerable. Now, there was a proposal filed to end the film tax credit and to increase the earned income tax credit. Can you tell us about that? Sure. So the state provides filmmakers a tax credit. Uh, a lot of that money, we, we've had reports from the Department of Revenue show, a lot of that money actually goes to out-of-state companies or individuals. Only a third of that money actually stays in state. So what Governor Baker proposed was to take the money we're giving away out-of-state and, and actually increase an earned income tax credit that goes to low-income working families. Uh, we would double it from 15% to 30% of the federal tax credit you would get. Uh, that means a, a working family of three, uh, by the time we fully phase in this tax credit, would get almost $1,000 more a year. And that's significant, and that money's staying in-state and it's going to people who really need it. Not an industry that people could argue that really doesn't need that tax credit and that money going to, to Hollywood versus Boston. Okay, so there's discussion to expand the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. What's happening with these plans? So that's another, outside of the general operating budget, we have capital projects. So whether it's the T or the Convention Center. Uh, the Convention Center uh, proposed, there's a proposal to expand the Convention Center. It's a billion dollar proposal. Uh, administration of Finances to, uh, and the Governor uh, are taking a hard look at the numbers behind that to determine whether we really need an expansion. Do the numbers make sense? Is it going to uh, risk other projects? Is it going to affect the Commonwealth in any way uh, in our bond rating or in, in certain financial areas? Speaking about how this is going to impact Massachusetts taxpayers, let's talk about the 2024 Olympics. The operating budget to host is estimated at $4.5 billion. So how does this affect the state's infrastructure? Something else we're reviewing, there's a lot of uh, infrastructure projects assumed in their plans that maybe projects already going forward. What the governor has decided to do is in a bipartisan way with the Senate, President and, and House Speaker, hire a consultant, take a look at that, take a look at what the, what the state's risks may be here, and we'll take a look and see if, if it's really worth investing. Make sure in that it works for Massachusetts. Well, thank you so much for being here, Dominic. Thank you. Thanks for watching Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Jenny Johnson.